This game is T and is not suitable for kids. Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, honey! And guess. Welcome back to more Miles Edgeworth Face Attorney Investigations, everybody! We just had the biggest marathon of British Bake Off. While okay, it was, it was two episodes. No, but, but two episodes of British Bake Off's like almost two hours, so. It was yeah, great. I know. It, I wouldn't chocolate. say it's like a binge session or anything. No, it wasn't like. <laughs> <laughs> Two nice episodes is not a binge watch. <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, we're still in the middle of turnabout reminiscence. Oh, we're about to talk to the judge. Oh man, the top screen looks so much worse than the bottom. Oh, it does. You hadn't been looking at that. I've been no, I at always the look at the. I've been looking at the top screen. The I always time. look at the laptop screen. Yeah, I've been looking at the top screen because that's easier for me. And it doesn't no, like on the head. top screen, Francis is like white. Oh yeah. <laughs> like pure white. Your Honor, I'd like to ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. Where were you at the time of the murder? Oh, uh, do you suspect me of something? No, nothing of the sort, Your Honor. <laughs> Very well, you may continue your testimony. <laughs> your Honor, it's your testimony I'm after. Oh! I had no idea you were chasing after me or my testimony. I'm beginning to sense that I might want to avoid being in a trial run by this judge. <laughs> well, too bad, he too runs bad all you get trials. All of them. <laughs> Let's see here, uh, now then, how should I put this? When you get to be my age, you need to pay more frequent visits to the restroom. His face sprite. Hmm. He was so depressed. If you go take a look through the window at the end of this hall, you see a small window. That is the window to the men's restroom. Uh, why are there windows in restrooms? Why are you why? talking about this? <laughs> in other words, you can cl see clearly into the hallway from the men's restroom. Oh, when I was going into the restroom, that Detective Gumshoe was there. Well, he was standing in front of the vending machines, buying something from it. Hmm. However, and this I couldn't believe, when I was about to exit the restroom, there was not a soul in the hallway anymore. Your Honor, if you could please calm down and explain it to me rationally. Oh, I'm really sorry. Uh, please let me regain my composure. It was really suspicious! That's what my finally home judge's intuition said. Although, well, until the murders occurred, I just sort of brushed it off. Uh-huh. <laughs> Apparently this judge doesn't understand the concept of staying calm. It's probably all I'm going to find out from his honor. No, I wanted to show him my prosecutor's badge. I just realized, badge. Francisco's about the same size as him. Height, yeah. Yeah, like height-wise. Uh, Mr. Retchworth, may I return to my other duties now? Yes, I'm sorry to have held you up. Thank you for your cooperation, your honor. Ho ho ho! Anytime, Mr. Edgeworth, anytime! Cool. The judges in this country seem rather friendly. Yes, if not a little wishy-washy. However, I hear that they are known to hand down very fair verdicts. Did you find something, officer? I think there's a five dollar bill back there! Come on! Just a little more! I literally called it. Is there no one working this crime scene who isn't a total waste of living tissue? Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be a single person we can deem useful here. Oh my gosh. Literally, I was just thinking about this. <laughs> Last... There yeah. was one time that I... When I did theater... I still do theater, but... When I did theater back in the day, we would meet and there would be, like, vending machines in the building. Mm -hmm. and one time, I looked under the vending machine and there was a $5 bill. Oh, Which is wow. why I said, oh, I bet there's a $5 bill under there. And, like, oh. there Have you found any suspicious fingerprints, officer? Yeah, just the fingerprints of those about the case, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we know all of the players in this case then, huh? It would appear that way, but I have the nagging feeling that we're missing something. And I suspect that what we're missing is hiding right here in this crime scene somewhere. Justice for all. He's making a most ridiculous looking face. That may be, but at least he doesn't look like someone who would tell a lie on purpose. I suppose. But to Avon Karma, evidence is the only thing that carries any weight. Of course. At any rate, this poster seems to be of no use to us right now. <laughs> Does it say justice for all or just justice? Justice and judgment. Justice and judgment, okay. Fire. There are no signs that this fire extinguisher was used in the crime. If you could already tell from that from a distance, then why are you wasting your time examining it? Francisca, let's not try to rash rush absolute genius. I think that's does the have, does she have more things to say? Maybe. Also that's the fire extinguisher Mr. Wellington used. Oh. 
Yes, what is it? This is a pretty spacious hallway, but it's nothing compared to the ones at home. Indeed, because Mr. Von Karma's house is a bit too spacious. Oh, like they live in a mansion? Probably. Oh, man. However, even with this much space, there's nowhere for that scruff face to hide. Well, other than the crime scene just beyond those doors. Or behind the vending machines. Franziska, I believe it's much too early to draw any conclusions. It was already proven that Detective Gumshoe was in this hallway the entire time. Now all we need to do is gather more information. And to do that, I'll just have to examine everything I see here by myself. So, according to the judge, someone looking through the restroom window that you can see from the window at the end of the hall can see into this hall? I wonder exactly how true that statement is, don't you? Well, Francisco, why don't you go check out the men's room yourself if I out? <laughs> well, it is possible to get a pretty clear view of this hallway from that restroom. Is there really a men's bathroom window through the end of the window at the end of this hall? Of course. Can you not see it? Ah! I demand that you show me this view at once! I suppose I should go examine that window once again anyway. Drag her into the guy's bathroom. She's, she's too short. To I it. wonder, so the fire extinguisher was not used? No, it, it wasn't. said it was not used. Okay. I was trying to figure out if there was like a ridiculous circumstance with Gumshoe where it's like, he wanted to get something out of the vending machine, he shook the vending machine, and then <laughs> something caught fire, and he was like, oh crap! How does something catch fire from shaking a vending machine? I don't know. They say vending machines are dangerous if you shake them, maybe. Yeah, like, because they can crush you, I not know. because they can catch on fire. I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't look like there's anything contradictory left in this area. Hmm, I suppose not. Perhaps I should check something else. Hot dog, seven dollars. That's like a, that's a Disney Coke. That's Disney Coke price. So Beef jerky, nine dollars. Hamburger. Orange juice, milk, uh, ham sandwich, and then Swiss it'll probably, rolls. It'll probably be shown. Hmm. It would appear that this vending machine sells snacks and various other foods. Oh yeah, more logic. Oh yeah, Swiss rolls, ham sandwich. Six bucks for a Swiss roll. That's ridiculous. Just lovely. What will they think of next? Don't be a jerk in court like these beef jerks. One packet for nine dollars. Defendant's fresh milk. One half pint for seven dollars. Stay neutral as the Swiss do, do until the end with these. For six dollars. Wow. They're awfully overpriced. The lineup is simply awful. Period. Speaking of snacks, I wonder if that Swiss roll the little girl dropped is from this machine. Hmm. I was wondering about that myself. Credit card is accepted. Six dollars! Well, they would have to be. Who carries six dollars? Well, Who carries cash on hand anymore? I do. Oh, I I don't. Uh, so that's good to know, though, if there's... So if anyone out there is trying to rob me, just know I don't carry cash, so you're not going to get anything. Okay. Um, they say there's going to be time specials. Mm-hmm. When it's looking bad, blind, at your, your, blind your opposition with some OJ. Are they promoting violence? Don't worry, my whip will make sure that anyone following this advice won't be for long. Compared to the stain of a whip, the stain of orange juice may not be so bad. When you're in hot water, you might need a hot dog. Hmm. It looks like this slogan was decided through a public contest. And the winner was... Prosecutor Winston Payne? Idiot! <laughs> what a pathetic slogan. No presence at all! Now if it was up to me, it would read... If you leave matters in Avon Karma's hands, everyone in court will be found guilty dogs. Objection! Overruled! <laughs> Don't be a jerk in court like these beef jerks. I see. Objection! Miles Edgeworth, wouldn't you agree that it is a very clever pun? Do you really think they put that much effort into the product name? Even a foolish fool could understand the foolish thinking of a fool who made it up! You're acting so foolishly that I got so thoroughly mad and now I'm utterly famished! If you wanted a pack of these, all you had to do was act like a normal person. Don't let the prosecution and the defense make a ham sandwich out of you? Sounds like it's directed at the ham of the judge. Well, it certainly isn't directed at me. I can outmaneuver him any day. These are great. Defendant's fresh milk. What exactly is that supposed to mean? I believe it means that the milk is freshly 
milk by various defendants on trial right now. No, I think it might mean that the, it was milked right here from the various defendants. You can't possibly be serious! Of course not. Stay neutral as the Swiss do until the end with these. The end of what? Well, I assume it means the end of the trial. I suppose this means that one should eat these during a recess? You can't eat during a trial, so I suppose the only time you can eat them is now, huh? I wouldn't mind if you wanted to eat one now. They come in packs of two, after all. Hm. We're in the middle of an investigation. Besides, I don't have six dollars on me. If you want, we can pool our money and buy a pack together. If I have to split it with you, then I don't want it! She well, just wants what all a the jerk. Swiss rolls. I mean, kind of same, though. What? I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. Is, are there ants going up the wall? <laughs> the ants are hard at work carrying their food home. <laughs> it's a marvel that they can pick up such comparatively large objects to their size. Well, if you want to carry the mighty Von Karma name and not be squished under it, you'd better work extra hard just like these ants. The same goes for you, Francisco. So that window on the other side belongs to the men's restaurant. I can't see it. At your height, I'm not surprised. No! I guess short people have feelings too. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> also, I just want to say, absolute, short people got absolute to terrible for. design for this. If that you can walk past this window and just Ooh, see I wonder what's in the men's bathroom. <laughs> like, what? No, I don't want to walk past and see this is like, why men taking I don't... a dump or something. <laughs> yeah, you already had to witness that when you were working at the Not wedding. Not taking a dump. No, no, yeah. but using the urinal. That's still... Yeah, that was terrible. Ugh. Like, you're like, I'm trying to clean this. You can't use it. They're... That's okay. I don't mind. I don't yeah, mind. but I do. I'm, fine. I'm cleaning the bathroom and you're just standing right there. That's okay. Ugh. What is this? It's a pink colored piece of trash made of rubber. Oh, oh, I wonder if I know what that's for. Hmm, I feel like I've seen something like this before. Well, all I see is a piece of garbage. But you know, the fact that there's a litter running around loose inside this courthouse, it's simply unforgivable! Ah! It's not like I was the one who littered! Rubbish belongs in a rubbish bin! Gah! I wonder if it's part of a balloon. Baloney, no! Ah! What's the matter? I pricked myself on one of the cactus's needles. I didn't think the needles on this thing would be so sharp. Well, what did you expect? Can't you imagine how bad it would be if you would hit your head on one of these? Anyway, this cactus seems to be unrelated to our case. Do you really think so? Because I believe that this cactus sitting on this windowsill is completely related. Well, then I look forward to your explanation on how exactly it is related. Yeah, sure. Windows open. Ah, handprint! Ants are pouring out of the hole, uh, <laughs> Ants are pouring out of the hole in this bench as well. I wonder if the inside of this bench consists of nothing but ants. Don't you dare continue with that gross line of thought! Ugh! I I'm sorry. What are these black speckles? I believe it's a pile of ants eating away. Ugh, the detective! He claims that not a single ant slipped by him. And yet here is a whole hill of them! Gah! What are you hitting me for? As a replacement for that pathetic detective! Ugh! Perhaps I should add this deduction to the detective's growing tab of pay cuts. Anyway, I wonder where the ants are eating. From the look and sweet smell of it, pieces of cake and chocolate from a Swiss roll. Miles Edgeworth. This courthouse is to be kept pristine at all times! Man, she's just on it. No! It wasn't me that dropped the food on the ground! The courthouse... must be... kept clean! No! Wow. She's a brat today. Like, previous time she was just kind of normal. Normal? 
for normal, still verbally abusing people, still physically abusing normal people. Normal on karma. I am normal. I am normal. The dirt on this bench, it smells like some sort of sweet substance. I can't believe there's someone going around dirtying the courthouse. For shame. Hold it. Calm down, Franziska. Now take a good look. Doesn't this smudge look kind of like a handprint to you? I suppose it could be. Which means that perhaps we can lift the prints of the person who sullied this bench. I see. And then we'll know the identity of our mystery slob. You there, the lab technician. Could you please find out who this handprint belongs to? Zern, yes sir! That should be other guys fishing around the venture. I got the results of the fingerprint analysis, sir! And... What the heck is wrong with your voice? How is that your normal voice? Do we know who they belong to? Sir, the fingerprints belong to Detective Gumshoe! Oh... Interesting. Please don't talk again. Good work, officer. Debt Gumshoe's fingerprints data I dotted down in the work. Jotted down in the work. Why do people make fun of my voice? <laughs> <laughs> and there you have it. Yes, I suppose so. Now we know the identity of the person who dirtied the bench. I sense that you and I will be using this information in very different ways. Yo, man. Detective Bad, I have something I wish to inquire about. Doing some actual work, you. I wish to inquire into Detective Gumshoe's movements during the recess. You're getting in the way of the investigation. I have an order from Mr. Von Karma himself. Plus, I still hold investigative authority. <laughs> so I hear you were the one who called for Detective Gumshoe to come down here. Fair day. That guy was just accused. You know. I just knew something was gonna happen. My detective's instinct told me. A lot of good it did you. You couldn't even protect one lonely prosecutor with it. Hold it! Franziska, I think you need to apologize. Ugh! I'm sorry. I'm terribly sorry, Detective Bad. Please continue. They <laughs> used the phone on the first floor. Called the precinct. I told them to send somebody over. And that detective's the one that showed up. Hmm. And only upon his arrival did you set Detective Gumshoe to stand guard, Detective Bad? Yeah. I waited for him on the first floor. After he got here, we came up to these defendant lobbies together. Oh, flashback! Sup, you? As we entered this hallway, we ran into you. She told us that Faraday was really mad, and that he dragged Rill off to Bobby Number Two to have a word or something. And that Faraday had said to not let anyone interrupt them. So what choice did I have? All I could do was tell the big lug to stand guard outside. And around what time did all of that take place? Let's see. I think it was about 30 minutes before I heard the gunshot. After giving the big lug his assignment, he never left the hallway. Not once. Oh, and how can you make such a claim? Hm. One of the guards out in this floor's main lobby swore to me he did it. If the detectives never left the hallway, then where did he disappear off to? Hmm, that's simple. He must have gone into lobby number two. Flobby? I called Flobby. It, I said Flobby. Lobby number two. Just as I suspected. She's jet lagged from riding the tractor. <laughs> <laughs> That's the slowest freaking thing you could ride. She's like, I just get so much sick this <laughs> You and I, we were in lobby number one next door. Mm -hmm. The only one without an alibi is Gumshoe. Yeah, mm. I think a lot of these people are in cahoots together. <laughs> everyone's against Gumshoe. Not everyone. Except the judge. Gumshoe, but but there's some things where it's like bad, I mean his name alone speaks volumes. Mm -hmm. um, but then there's you who was like, oh, this is happening right now. They don't need to be disturbed, but I need you to come with me. And it could be, she was talking to that guy who looks like he's 40. Manny Cochin. Manny Cochin. So if she had Manny. seen him before that, it might be that like they were doing stuff. The problem is 
there's still a lot that we really don't know. Right. Which is confusing. Hmm. It would seem that I'm still missing some key pieces of information. Music's good. Yeah. Detective Bad, you also heard the gunshot, did you not? Yeah. I heard it when I was in defense lobby number one. That's why I came around towards lobby number two to get him. How much time elapsed between you hearing the gunshot and your arrival on the scene? Less than a minute. What were your movements upon hearing the gunshot? We were at the big lug who was just walking around in the hall. We raced into lobby number two. And that's when we discovered the bodies. That makes you the discoverer of the crime scene, right? Yeah. Yes, it does, little miss. I am about to become a prosecutor very soon! You will treat me with the dignity I deserve, or else! Hmm. You wave that thing around anymore? I'll have you arrested for obstruction, little miss. You wouldn't dare! I like how he dodged her whip. Yeah, the <laughs> only one. <laughs> Just joking. <sighs> Detective Bad is really something if he can make Francisca behave. Yeah, this is the first time I've ever heard her say sorry. Yeah! Are we about done? Is there anything else I should ask him about? Time he heard the gunshot, place he heard the gunshot, situation around the gunshot. Maybe time, just to make sure he heard it the correct time? Because when did Gumshoe say... I don't know. I'd like for you to tell me the exact time you heard the gunshot. It was around the end of the recess, and the trial was about to start again, I think. He was supposed to make time for himself to transfer the evidence he was holding. But I got the sense he wasn't going to show for the handoff. Uh... So I figured I should go get him or he'd be late. And just as I thought that, bang, the sound of a gunshot hit my eardrums. So he heard the gunshot right before the trial was about to restart, huh? Take a bad testimony, jot it down in the organizer. Are we done here? Alright, so I think now we can just go back to the other ones. Detective Bad, where were you when you heard the gunshot? How many times are you going to ask that? I was in defendant lobby number one when I heard the gunshot. That was easy. It's exactly the same as what he said earlier when I asked. Him. Get out of here. You're getting in the way. Hold it! <laughs> I'm not through questioning you yet! I'd like to know a little more about the circumstances under which you heard the gunshot. Like I said, I was in lobby number one when I have nothing else to add. Well, his testimony certainly corroborates what Miss Yu said. Miles, you already asked him about that, remember? Hmm, I suppose I should ask about something else. Well, no, we already did that. I don't have any time to waste. Oh, come on. All you're doing is standing in front of this door doing nothing. I get the sense that he is somewhat investigating this crime scene. Or rather, that he is keeping us under surveillance. But to what end? Detective Bad, may I ask that you cooperate with us for just a little bit longer? I don't have anything else to say. The two of you. You guys were the ones who said you wanted to investigate in the first place. Fine then. Be obstinate. We'll just do as we please. Come on, Miles. You may no longer be willing to help us, however. May I ask for the forensic scientist's cooperation? Do as you like. That guy's voice annoys me. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Just showing that off makes you feel like a big, strong prosecutor. Uh, of course not! I was simply proving my title of prosecutor to you. I see. Most prosecutors don't go around flaunting those things. It's like a detective walking around inside with his badge flashing in the sunlight. You show that out too much, and before you know it, you'll be elbow deep in angry criminals. That would definitely be a problem. Okay, well. I've got a knife. About that knife. Detective Bad, I'd like to ask you about this piece of evidence. Ooh, <laughs> Just turned his back to us. Hmm, what a narcissist! He'd rather look at his face than the evidence. Don't trust your eyes all the time, little girl. I can see the evidence. And keep an eye on the two of you with this mirror. What? Then why don't you answer? Because I got nothing to say. That's all. 
That's kind of that was understood. Well, I couldn't even just said that at the beginning. What else is there? I don't think we're getting anything else out of him. Okay. Wait, no, not Francisca. What is it? Oh wait, new. There's a new thing. There's a new thing. You what? should have talked to me. <laughs> We've gathered so much information, but they feel like just random fragments to me. I wonder what really happened here. Random fragments? No matter how unrelated they may seem at first, they might actually fit together somehow. I grow tired of your inner monologues! Say something! No! Nah! I'm going to end up in pieces thanks to that whip before I can piece the logic together. Yeah, that was worth it. That was fun. Oh, logic! I forgot! Yeah! <laughs> uh, lobby number two window, no human well, can climb probably, through those barred windows. Probably the Swiss roll crumbs and the vending machine go together. That seems like a safe bet. Logic! <laughs> Gotta think about it! Ooh, yeah! These bits of chocolate and cake, could they not have come from a Swiss roll? A Swiss roll? Why would a courthouse sell a thing like that? It may not seem like the right venue, however, it is being sold right over there. The vending machine. I see. Stay neutral as the Swiss do until the end with these. Two for six dollars? Talk about expensive! Leaving the fact that it's on the expensive side aside, the fact that the cake crumbs and chocolate bits were found in this hallway suggests that they came from a Swiss roll that was purchased from this machine. Okay, seriously. Here's the thing, though. Two for six dollars. Each Swiss roll, which is probably the size of, like, a little Debbie, like, ho-ho. That's three bucks a piece! That's You're, insane! No, no, it, it depends on the Swiss roll. Some Swiss rolls are, like, the size of a cinnamon roll. Three dollars for one of those. Three dollars for From a vending machine. Sure. Also, second thing. I'm assuming Gumshoe got that. He doesn't have the money for that. He never has had the money for that kind of stuff. He only had five dollars. <laughs> Maybe it was because of his bonus. He, he only had five dollars from the bonus. <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. He could buy like maybe one put, point okay, six. Okay, maybe maybe Swiss this is rolls. what happened. He put in the five dollars and he said, "Oh crap, I can't get my can't get my change back." Rattles the machine. <laughs> and then the five dollars falls under the vending machine, which the friends guys have gotta get there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hmm. I think I have a pretty clear picture of what happened here now. Hmm. Naturally. After all, I'm here, aren't I? Detective Gumshoe must have sat on this bench as he ate the Swiss roll. <laughs> I like that. And as he ate, he dropped it on the floor and sullied the bench. Debt Gumshoe's fingerprints are updated. But he's sitting where his fingerprints would normally be. <laughs> yeah. Ugh, how could he not have cleaned up after himself? How utterly despicable. Don't you dare whip me again! It wasn't I who made the mess in the first place! Anyway, if it was indeed Detective Gumshoe who bought the Swiss roll, that creates a rather interesting contradiction of facts. A contradiction? Where? Hmm. I think another look at the special courthouse vending machine is in order. Contradiction of the facts? <laughs> there was... I won't rest until I've inspected everything on the menu. <laughs> was it because Gumshoe only had five dollars? <laughs> it is indeed. Aha! <laughs> uh -huh! Is this spot somehow connected to this to any of the evidence? I will submit the evidence. There we go. A life of justice and a dreams and hope. About Detective Gumshoe's finances, he said that until this morning, he didn't have even a single penny on his personage. Just how poor is that guy? If his bonus really was only five dollars, then he should not have been able to purchase a pack of Swiss rolls. Maybe he took money from the child. Took it? Yeah! I feel like Gumshoe's not the type to do that. Or maybe, like, maybe he also looked under the vending machine and was like, ooh! Or maybe someone had, like, already put in a dollar and was coming back later. He's just like... <laughs> yeah, like, okay, that's like when you go to the Zap Zone or whatever, and they've got, like, the DDR machines, and people put their credits in, and then it's like, oh, your laser tag game's going, and then they leave it going. You can just jump on and play DDR. <laughs> that's my favorite. However, facts being as they are, we found cake crumbs on the floor. Meaning Scruffy must have bought a pack somehow. Indeed. That detective should not have been able to purchase a pack, and yet he did. The question is, how? Thank goodness the Swiss rolls are so expensive so we can find that contradiction. Logic, logic. Did he go look at it in the windowsill? In the bathroom? 
So okay. that's the, from lobby number two. That's oh, not wait. from the hallway. Pink, pink trash. Made of rubber. Do you put rubber on cactus to prevent no. this? No. Okay. Um, what's up with the window? No human can climb through. Oh, that's really weird that that one has the barred windows, but the window sill that had the cactus on it doesn't have any bars. That, that's just a hallway window. The, de the, de the defendant lobby is where you've got presumably criminals, so you don't want them climbing out the window. Being like, I'm free! Yeah. I don't see how else the rest of this would match up. I was wondering about that, but I didn't know why it would work. This pink rubbery substance, I saw this in a different form earlier today. Even though this is like months ago for us. Oh! <laughs> I believe this is a piece of a popped balloon. Yes, I was right. Oh, that little girl had it. Mm hmm. K. Like, yeah, K. <laughs> Sorry, K. Love you, K. Not really, but yeah. <laughs> She's my least favorite partner. I suppose er, that's possible. The balloon probably got a little too close to our friend, the windsill, windowsill cactus. That would be the logical conclusion, yes. Balloon piece data jotted down in the organizer. Investigation complete! Full health! That guy's not complete though with finding his money. Hmm, I believe I now have a very firm grasp on what happened here. Ugh! Well, I do too! Hmph! Alright, Franziska, would you care to share what your conclusions are? Why should I do that? We're still in the middle of a competition, you know. We should be checking to see if your conclusions are wrong first, so you go ahead. It's almost cute that she's going this far to ensure that she wins. Almost. Very well, but first, we need to pay his honor a visit to correct his testimony. September 10th, 5.15pm, hey! District Court, courtroom number three. That's how big the courtroom is? Yep. Wow. Love the music here as well. Yeah, your, it's pretty good. Your honor, if I may, I'd like to test your witness testimony to see how it stands up. D do you doubt me? Am I your new suspect? <laughs> In a sense, I suppose you could say that. Even you, a judge, is nothing but a common witness before a von karma. Silence in the courtroom! Silence, I said! Mr. New Prosecutor recommended by Manfred Von Karma and Miss Genius Prosecutor as uh, successor to Mr. Von Karma. Ah! You bit your tongue and done again, didn't you? Just like I did. <laughs> as a defender of the law, I could never give false testimony. You can even place me under oath if you want. Very well, then. Your testimony, if you please. Hmm. Versus the judge, yes. Wow. What I saw at recess. During the recess, I um I went to the restroom. Okay. Let's hear all about this. Yep. <laughs> There's a window in the hallway side. In other words, I could see into the hallway. Like while you were in the stall or like while That's you were washing your say. hands? So, so here's no, because when I looked in, you could see the stalls. So what I'm wondering is, did he look over, see Gumshoe? Gumshoe saw him. Gumshoe just... saw the judge using the urinal, dropped the Swiss roll from Okay, Scott. no, no, no. The, the urinal's not facing the window. No, it's not facing the window. So but... how would how would the judge, like, do, turn his head 8, 180 degrees no, around? Like he an turns hour? it 90 degrees. It's it's here. Let's say the urinal's here. Judge is here. No, the window's behind the, the urinal. Like, so if you're facing the urinal, you're facing oh, you, the you opposite direction. The no, you Gumshoe can't do that! <laughs> maybe Gumshoe, okay, so the window was open. Maybe Gumshoe was like, ma'am, what a beautiful day. It looks over to the other side, sees the judge, screams. The judge is like, whoa! And then Gumshoe is so surprised he drops his Swiss rolls. <laughs> this is very weird. <laughs> this is a weird testimony. Uh, there's a window in the hallway side. In other words, I could see into the hallway. When a judge begins it with, I was using the restroom, <laughs> you know it's going to be an interesting testimony. <laughs> As I entered, I saw the detective buying something from the vending machine. Oh, when he entered the restroom, not the stall. Okay. Oh. But when I was about to exit the restroom, he had completely disappeared. Okay, so he went in, like, glanced out the window as he was walking towards the stall, saw Gumshoe, used the bathroom, then as he was leaving, he would, like, oh, glance but, out the window again. that makes again. sense, because Gumshoe was sitting, and you can't see him sitting through the window. Very, very apt, yes. That's, that's it. <laughs> he had completely disappeared. He didn't. A detective that goes missing while on duty? That sounds mighty suspicious to me! <laughs> I like those voice cracks. Your Honor... Can you please try to remain calm? Oh! 
Are they talking opposite sides of the court? Because they're standing behind the benches. No, that's just the way it's stylized, oh. basically. Oh, I'm so used to simply listening to testimonies that I got caught up in the excitement. I'm sorry, Your Honor, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to spoil your fun now. Well, actually, we're going to have to spoil this fun in the next episode. Because it's time I think I end. got it, though. You did get it, so just remember that. Because I think we're going to do another episode after dinner. Yeah, okay. Anyhow. Thanks for watching, everybody. Tune in next time. We are going to destroy the judge's testimony Poor completely. Judge. <laughs> I, li I like the judge. Says, Poor L judge. Link in particular like loves the judge in this case. He's really interesting. And it's, it's nice like, having him just not as just the judge, but as like a witness. And it's <laughs> nice to see him like he's not just like I am the judge always. Like he's kind of like the oh well I'm doing this thing. And, yeah, I was using the bathroom. I mean, and, I mean he would anyway, but like yeah. Anyhow, until we meet again, have a great day and God bless. Thank you.